Joining us now with more on the assassinations of Iranian officials Mohsen Fakhrizadeh and Moslem Shadan is former Israeli Deputy National Security Advisor Professor Chuck Freilich. Professor, thank you so much for being with us. Now, first off, all fingers are pointing at Jerusalem, and many have discussed the likelihood that Fakhrizadeh's was an Israeli assassination. But what about Shadan? How likely was this an Israeli strike? Well, I don't have any confirmation, of course. But I think it's pretty clear Israel's been waging a so-called campaign between the campaigns for a number of years now, trying to prevent Iran from setting up an offensive base in Syria for operations against Israel. They've been trying to establish air, naval, and ground bases. And this is something which Israel cannot allow to happen. Uh, and in some ways, it's an even greater threat than the, the nuclear one, in the sense that it's it, much shorter term. The nuclear threat, we still have a while. This one, we can't afford to wait very long with. Well, so, so you know, what does this say for, what, what do these recent strikes really say about maybe the balance of power in the Middle East and, and how that's shifting? Because these, these latest strikes, if nothing else, are, you know, a pretty big black spot on Iran's security. They certainly are. And there have been a series uh, of attacks in Iran itself, some attributed to Israel, some maybe not. Uh, in any event, it demonstrates the fact that Iran is very, very vulnerable to outside intervention. But Iran is a regional power, and playing with it is rather dangerous. I think that Iran is the first adversary we've ever faced, which is so powerful, so sophisticated, and so far away that we probably cannot de defeat it. We can't win in a confrontation with Iran. We can defend ourselves quite successfully, and I sleep quite well at night, but we can't defeat Iran. And while there are some things that we must do, such as taking measures to prevent their entrenchments in Syria and to prevent the continuation of the nuclear program. At the same time, what we should be trying to do is lower tensions with Iran and coordinate policy with the incoming Biden administration. All right, well, so, you know, how do you see that coordination, especially between the Biden administration and Iran, you know, how do you see that uh, showing up or, or taking shape, especially uh, as we've just covered the fact that the Iranian parliament is now hardlining its uh, nuclear ambitions. Well, it's not surprising that they're taking ag aggressive measures following the killing of uh, Fakhar Zadeh. We wouldn't expect any less. And I hope that they won't respond militarily against Israel, which they may still do. And that's, of course, also something that had to be taken account by whoever launched the attack. All but right. in terms of the yep. consultations, the very close dialogue that I think should be underway with uh, the incoming administration, well, the targeted killing of Fakhar Zadeh, if we're behind it, was not a, mo a move that was conducive to that. Mm. And maybe that outweighs considerably whatever limited tactical advantage was gained by taking one person out of this, wow. out of the picture is as important as he is. Wow. All right. Well, it'll be, it'll be really interesting to see if this is truly a Hydra situation, as you're, as you're kind of alluding to. Professor Freelich, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.